Hello, my darling Fumi Nation. How are you? How are we? I've got some very exciting news for you guys. The 16th of April is my birthday, and we are going to have an exclusive meet and greet slash sister to sister. Yes, talk and chat with you guys in collaboration with the beautiful OPV Beauty. My first ever meet and greet, and it is the kickoff to a world tour. Yep, I'm coming to Chicago, I'm coming to Atlanta, I'm coming to New York, I'm coming to California, I'm coming to Oslo, I'm coming to South Africa. We are going around the world. We're going to meet Fumi Nation, and we start off here in London, 16th of April. I will put the event bright after this message and i will also put the link you're going to have drinks champagne birthday cake and i get to hug you <laughs> darling Fumi Nation, how are you? How are we? Welcome back to the show. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, my name is Fumi Desalovold and you guys are so very welcome. I'm like super excited because we have a special guest. Yes, my darlings, I was just telling the fam on Instagram that we've come to that stage and age where I just really want to share the platform with you guys because you guys are such great supporters. I feed off of your energy. Why don't I bring some of you that want to come on to the show and let's talk let's talk about relationships and that's what we're going to talk about today with our special guest and let's talk about all kinds health fitness motherhood getting older you know hot topics I really said to myself, Fooms, you make this your daytime talk show because you're here every day. You might as well continue to revamp it and cater it to all of you that love. Talking about love, do we live? Do we love? Yes, this is my hair. I had time today, so I decided to curl it. I mean, I'm just loving my edges. <laughs> in my 50s and my edges are intact too all right so our special guest we're just waiting for him to come on because we're going to go on to zoom his name is shen yen bostock and i had done a subject on one of his uh topics that came from his book it's all about relationships and it's nice to have a man on the show Huh? all righty so guys girls get your pens and let's take notes ladies and gentlemen let me introduce you to mr shenyan bostock yay <laughs> can you hear me yes i can you can you hear me yes Shenyan, <laughs> how are you <laughs> i'm doing well how are you <laughs> lovely to see you i know it's too early in the morning in new york yes 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 i've been up for a while actually so it's all good yes Oh my God, I'm so excited to have you. Thank you so very much for coming onto the show. Fumi Nation is so excited to have you. So honored. Congratulations on your fabulous book. Thank you so much. Yes. And let me stop talking. Let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about you. And then I will go on to how I discovered you. <laughs> Definitely. So my name is Cheyenne Bostock. Most know me as a life coach and a relationship expert. Uh, my son knows me as dad. <laughs> so I'm a proud oh, father goodness. and I'm excited. I'm getting ready to get married in May. So I'm excited about that. Um, but I'm passionate about helping the single ladies learn how to attract their ideal mate. And that's why I do what I do. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Oh my God, May is a wonderful time. Oh, so you are... You, you really are everything. This is why I found you so fascinating. I just saw a little clip of you and you were talking about, you know, dating and what were the expectations of just meeting for the first time and having a quick date just to know each other and 
how much money should go into that first deed. And I was fascinated because it was exactly what I did with my husband of 15 years. It wasn't about, you know, money or eating out or whatever. The cooks of it was, can we get along? Do we like each other? All of those other things will come. But I need to know I'm not wasting my time and we are on the same page. So I really love that. Yes, yes, I really love that. I remember one time I invited a young lady out for a buffer date. Now, I highly recommend a buffer date before investing more. A buffer date is 30 minutes during the daytime, $10 or less, low pressure to fill each other out. She accepted the coffee date and we got there. Now, as per usual, I normally eat before I come to the date to make sure that I'm satisfied and I'm not showing up with negative energy, hungry, hangry, or with an attitude. And also so that I'm not wasting time ordering food, waiting on the food, eating the food, and spending more time than I actually want to with this individual that I don't know. So she said she was hungry. So we went to a place where there was food and she was upset that I didn't pay the bill. And I'm saying, honey, I invited you for coffee not a meal. Now, if I would have do things differently before that buffer date, I would have had a phone conversation with her to see if we are even compatible and to see if she's interested in a buffer date. And that's something that I highly recommend to you ladies. Let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. And I have a lot of single girlfriends. I have them in their 50s, like me. I have them in their 30s and their 40s. And I have the young ones, the young girls coming out of college. And they really do want to have a long lasting relationship. So you really are the poster child that you can do it again. You can reinvent yourself. Can you tell us from a man's perspective that is actually doing it? What should we look for? What's the advice that you can give us? Absolutely. And congratulations to you on your 15 year marriage. That is a wonderful accomplishment. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, much for having me on the show. I'm so, I'm so excited to talk about this. And, yes. um, you know, when you reached out to me, I was like, this is awesome, you know, because I love really, I'm really passionate about helping the ladies. So to answer your question, one of the things that I highly recommend is a woman being intentional about dating and relationships and being serious. In all my years of being single, and when I say single, I mean not married, I can tell you very plainly and very simply why I have never been married before this coming May. I wasn't ready. I mean, I mean when I talk to my guy friends, when men talk to each other, we're, we're really honest with each other. We're like, man, I'm not ready for marriage. That's exactly what we say. I'm not ready for marriage. Mm. Most women, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. What, what they really mean is I'm tired of being alone. And uh -huh. that's not the same as being ready to be in a relationship. So when a woman gets honest, when she can look herself in the mirror and say, I'm not spiritually mature. There's mm. four things you have to be. And four things that you have to look for. Those four things are spiritual maturity. Yes. Emotional intelligence. Yes. Financial stability. Amen. And you have to value your health and wellness. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you can look at a person and tell they don't value their health and wellness. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking at a woman from across the room, I don't have to approach her to find out she doesn't value her health and wellness. I can look at her and make assumptions. Mm -hmm. And that's what women need to understand is we make assumptions, whether they're true or not. We make assumptions. I want to see. Is, how can I get this guy to come to me? And so if we're going based off these four things, spiritual maturity, you might be spiritually mature. That's cool. You might even be emotionally intelligent. You might be financially abundant. But if you're missing this health and wellness thing, it's deeper than just, oh, she doesn't eat healthy. It's deeper than she, she has no discipline in her diet. He's thinking long term, this woman is going to be cooking for me and my children. <laughs> So if she's not taking good care of herself, how in the hell is she supposed to take care of me and my children? Mm -hmm. So you might even get a pro you might not even get approached based off of the four things that he's measuring by. So and he might approach you and say, you know what? She's not going to be my long term woman, but I can have fun with her right now. 
And this is what a lot of women aren't aware of. They think, oh, yeah, he's a nice looking guy. He is uh, funny. He is charming. He is a good guy. Surely he's going to take me seriously. No, no, that's not the case. He's going to take you seriously if you take yourself seriously. Some women, they allow men to come in and waste their time. Ooh. They allow men to lead them to the bedroom and nowhere else. When you make a decision that you're not going to allow anyone to do that to you, you'll be amazed at how, how many people will meet you, get to know you, and find out you can't be played with, and then walk away. Mm -hmm. If a man is able to play around with you, that means you gave him permission. Mm -mm -mm. I always say it. A guy can do to you only what you allow. Absolutely. When my husband and I were dating, I told him up front, the bedroom is off the zip code ventures. We did not sleep together until our wedding night. Nice. I made it a point. And my fiance and I, my fiance and I are abstaining until marriage. Yes. Yes. And because that is such a small part of a long life relationship. That's not what's really important. It's part of it, but it's not all the way important as in who are you? What do you want to become? What are your goals? What are your ambitions? When we bring children, you have to have some kind of common ambition and goal that you say to yourselves, I'm not going to quit on you. You're not going to quit on me. We're going to do this all the way. Love the guy. Know the man. And that what you're speaking about is vision. And that's something that a lot of men and women simply don't have. They don't see long term. Mm. So I wrote a book, Foods of Mind, What a Woman Needs to Know to Keep a Man. And in that book, what I talk about is if a man is serious, yes, if he really, really wants to be with you, and you know, he's not gonna know that upon just meeting you. There's a process mm. to it, mm. there's levels. So when you if I'm across the room and yes. you're over there, right yes. now we're on ground, what I call ground zero. <laughs> ground zero is I see you. I yeah. see you. You might see me. I'm trying to get to level one. I'm trying to eliminate the space between us. Okay. So I'm going to come and I'm, I see that there's an attraction. So now I'm on my way. I'm getting from ground zero to level one. Yes. I'm attracted and I need to get the conversation going so that I can figure out a way for us to get closer. Yes. I'm at, I'm at level one. I see you're attracted. Most men only want to get to level two. Level two is sex. Level two of the bedroom. So you see that a lot. He goes from ground zero. You see each other. Then uh, level one, you start talking. You, you see that there's an attraction. And then what happens is, now you notice I didn't say level two was a date. No, right? no. Level two for a man is not a date. Level two is getting her in bed. So he gets her in bed. And then the woman is like, okay, so when do we get to level three, the date? He's like... <laughs> I'm finished. I already reached my finish line. That's where I wanted to go. So a man, he has his plan. Most women think that men don't have a plan. He has a plan. What a woman needs to do when she meets a guy is see what type of plan he has and see if that plan is in alignment with who she is and where she wants to go. So if she sees that the man went from ground zero to level one to level two, jumping in bed, automatically that lets you know that that's not your ideal mate. Or maybe that is your ideal mate, depending on who you are. And see, there's no escaping accountability for women. If you're the type of woman to be okay with the man inviting you to bed on level level two, then you're going to attract that type of man every time. But if you make a decision to say, you know what, I'm the type of woman that I'm going to require that a man court me and propose and marry me before he's able to access that part of me, then I guarantee you, you'll start attracting those types of men. But when I say that, some women think that just because you're going to attract those types of men, that that's going to happen 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. No, you're going to attract a lot of men. Most of the men are just going to try to get to level two. Mm -hmm. They're just going to try to get you in bed. Mm -hmm. And you have to 
know how to maneuver around those guys and be patient and be diligent and even be proactive so that you can meet more men who are in alignment with who you are. The same thing applies to men. Men are going to meet women who don't like them at all. They mm -hmm. just see that he's a nice guy and say, you know what? That's a free meal, mm -hmm. uh, some some free drinks. I'm going to take advantage of them. And that man has to have enough wisdom to be able to discern that this woman is not the one. And wisdom comes from God. This is how you'll know a person is connected or disconnected from God uh -huh. based off of the discernment levels. And this can be tested just from observation. You can look at a woman. Women don't go to places like this. Godly women don't hang around with people like this. There's so much information that women don't understand that they're giving away. So even if he's a godly man, if he decides he wants to disconnect from God for, for, for a weekend, He's going to go to yeah. places where he can find keep women. Keep it disconnected not and not bring it into his own world. Right. He's going to keep it completely separate. And he's going to go. And he's going to seek out what he wants for that weekend or for that period. And he's never even going to consider you as the type of woman that he could take to the next level. It's just not even an option because that's not what he chose you for. So let me ask you, would you say that it really starts with self-love, with knowing who you are, with knowing what you want out of life. You want to meet like a nice guy, then you would know for a fact, you know what, Fooms? Go to the library. You might see, join a club, a book club, you know, join a sports club because, you know, guys like sports. But it really will be how you present yourself. For them to know, okay, she's serious, is she not serious? And don't be disappointed if four, five, six, seven guys want to get into your pants. They are trying. It's not personal. You just have to continue with the process of elimination. Would you say that? Absolutely. And there's two parts. So once you start to love yourself and you get an understanding of what love is, that's, that's only half. That's only part of the equation. The other part of the equation is to be able to identify what love isn't. Ow. So that when, you, when you're approached by men, it like, for example, I meditate every morning, right? I, I pray every morning. I work out every morning. You know, I listen to music. I dance every morning. And mm -hmm. so I'm looking in the mirror. I'm, you know, feeling out my energy. And I'm just in this really, really happy place every single morning. Mm -hmm. To me, that's love. So if I'm doing this every morning and then I go to, let's use the post office as an example, because the post office is usually terrible. It is. If I go to, okay, so the post <gasps> office opens at 9 a.m. The post office opens at 9 a.m. So if I'm meditating, praying, doing all of this stuff for myself from, uh, let's say, 8 to 8.45, I'm loving myself. And then 15 minutes later, I go to the post office at 9 a.m. And they're mean and nasty to me. I know that that's not love. How do I know? I just love myself all morning. Yes. Yes. So why? Yes. So now I have a choice. Yes. Do I want to spend the rest of my day at the post office where love is not? Or do I want to go back home where love is? 100%. Now, if I go to the post office and they're like, hi, good morning. How can I help you? You know, they have a smile on their face, good attitude. I'm like, okay, you know, I like this. I could buy, I feel some alignment. This is similar to what I'm doing at home. Let's say if they have good, pleasant music over there. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can feel some alignment. Some women, they'll do things for themselves and then they'll get with the guy who doesn't offer equal or greater value and they'll still give him a chance because he's fit, because he's good looking, because he has the gift of gab because he has money, because he has a nice car, because he has a nice house, because he has a huge following, because he's rich, because he's famous. All of these surface level material things that she's not even going to be able to get access to. That's the crazy part. She's not even going to get access to all of those things, but she's viewing that as valuable. I get it, how you can find that attractive. Yes. But what I recommend to women who are meeting a lot of awesome men who have a lot of value or high value men is test it. Test the water. Mm. Mm. Test it and see mm. if it is what it actually is. And a way you can do that is if a guy who has these things approaches you and he asks you for, you know, to exchange numbers, go ahead. 
here's what I recommend. Give mm -hmm. that man 72 hours to deliver on a first date. 72 hours. Some women will wait weeks, months, years, and still be open to connecting with the man. Mm -hmm. 72 mm -hmm. hours. Let yes. Me this down like, let's say you meet a man on a Thursday. Right? You meet him on a Thursday. Friday, he hasn't set up a date. Saturday, he hasn't set up a date. Sunday, he hasn't set up a date. You got all the evidence you need. That man is not that into you. <laughs> he was into you. You've got the weekend right there. You met this wonderful woman. You got the weekend right there. You want to show her, hey, I would love for us to go out. What is your schedule like this weekend? Are you free? 100%. This is a conversation you have over the phone. You know, you get exchange numbers. You don't have to text back and forth a whole lot. You could you could simply say, "Hey, um, I would love to see you again. Uh, why don't we jump on a call? I would like to get to know you a little better. Maybe no. we can plan something." So you can you can set that up. Okay, well, I get off work at five on Friday. So why don't you give me a call around like six? He calls at six. You guys jump on the phone for about fifteen minutes. You get out. You're asking him questions, and this is why you got to get my dating manual, ladies. Get my dating manual for single women. It has 30 steps to take for a first date. You can get that for free if you click the link in my bio um, at Cheyenne Basta. And so a lot of women don't know the questions to ask a man. These questions are so oh. Because if you don't ask the questions, what you do is you'll end up wasting time getting your hair and makeup done, driving. You're wasting gas now. You're wasting time. You get to the date, and now you're trying to ask the questions, but now it's too late. Because if you would have asked the questions over the phone, you would have realized there was misalignment and you would you could have declined the date. There's no emotional investment. He's not drawing you in more and more and more with lavish gifts or lavish experiences, which is a trap that most women fall into because they <laughs> skip the phone call and they go on the lavish date, not understanding that the lavish date is a part of his plan to suck <laughs> you in. And you in. So... You get on the phone, you meet him on Thursday. Immediately, he should be trying to set something up. Hey, what's your schedule like this weekend? Yes. Let's talk on the phone. You get on the phone, you're asking him the right questions. If, and in the back of the dating manual, I have a list of questions to ask yourself. And if he says no to any of the questions, no date. If he says yes to all of the questions, then you can go on the date. And then... What I recommend, and this is how you discover me, I recommend a buffer date. Yes. The buffer date is 30 minutes during the daytime, $20 or less. I'm going to break down each part of that buffer date. During the daytime, there's less chance of him trying to lure you in to the bedroom. Wow. Wow. There's less chance of him trying to lure you into the bedroom. During the daytime, your mindset is not even there. His mentality is not probably not even there. Yes. You're both thinking platonic, friendly, yes. a little bit of romantic. Uh, light. But right. this is just to feel the other's character out. A lot of women, they, set, they get lured into setting up a date at night. So already they're in the mood for sex. They're dressing up. They're getting the makeup and hair done. He's mentally preparing you to get in a sexual state wow. of mind. Wow, wow, wow. You are, mentally you are so you. right. My husband took me on a lunch picnic, picnic. We went to a museum. All our days, as you're just telling me, it's occurred to me, they were all during the day. They were all during the day. And then later on, I saw, I met his, um, his dad and his family, but they were all during the day and it was light and it was bright and it was fun. Fumination. Chenye has given us a free gift. You have to send me this book as well. I don't want to forget it when we get to the end of the episode. So I want to say it now. This is the book. It's called The Dating Manual. Dating manual. The, the Dating, dating manual. manual. The Dating Manual. So what's going to happen, guys? You have to follow Chen Yen. I'm going to put all of Chen Yen's uh, social media platforms here. I will check. <laughs> you have to follow him. Somebody's going to win this book. But Chen Yen, I want this book. I want this book too. But please let me not interrupt. Go ahead. I'm, I'm intrigued. <laughs> yes. So the first part is setting up the date during the daytime. 
Yes. The next yes. part is limiting it to about 30 minutes. The reason why, remember ladies, this is just the first date. Remove the scarcity mindset and step into an abundance mindset. If what you're looking for is alignment, not mm -hmm. a free meal, not mm -hmm. free drinks, not free entertainment. You're looking for alignment. Mm -hmm. A lot of women want the date. They don't want to get to know the guy. They just want the date. What about the girls? Because the girls brought it up to me. What about the fact that the girls do make an investment? They they get dressed, they wear their makeup, they show up. You have, they, to, get they dressed. Dress. You have to get dressed. You have to get dressed to go wherever you're going to go. You have to get dressed to go to the grocery store. You have to get dressed to go to work. You have to get dressed to go anywhere. I mean, you should be dressed anyway. You should be you should be dressed twenty four seven. Anyway. That's that's not an investment. <laughs> that's not an investment. That's like saying I had to work out this morning. You had to work out this morning anyway. Yeah, you, know, you should if, work if you, out anyway. Normally, if you normally wear makeup, if you normally do your hair, if you normally get dressed anywhere you go, you're not doing him any favors. That's not yeah. an investment in him. That's an investment in yourself. And you should yes. continue investing in yourself. So keep your investment for yourself. You need to come to the table with an investment in him. So there are three things that you should be looking to do on a date, any date. One, you should be looking to show him who you are. Mm -hmm. Two, you should be trying to figure out who he is. Yes. Yes. Three, you should be trying to figure out if and how this man fits into your life and vice versa. That's the That's only me. purpose of a buffer date and a first date. So during the daytime, 30 minutes, under $20. It mm. could be for free. A walk in the park. Mm. Go to get some ice cream. Yeah. About 10 bucks. Yeah. A coffee and bagel. And yeah. don't say I don't yeah. drink coffee. Coffee shops offer coffee, tea, juice, yeah. water, yeah. hot chocolate. Yes. This is how, and this is why I recommend the buffer day, especially for men to protect themselves. Like I said, I'm a man and I have a son. Mm -hmm. My son is going to be faced with women who will want to take advantage of him. So I say, son, buffer day. If you say, dad, I want to take this, this girl out to the movies. I say, okay, here's the money for the tickets. You have her buy the popcorn. Mm -hmm. She has to bring something, something to the to table. A hundred percent. Especially in this day and age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, I agree. So I agree. I so, so, so agree. There are wealthy guys and they can afford you, but you still will not know if they like you. They can afford you. It, it, you have to take that out of the equation. There you go. There you go. And this is where we have to get honest and serious about who the woman is. Yeah. But what I love about those guys who are wealthy, they know when they know that the woman doesn't like her. And that's why they use their money to punish those poverty stricken women, those scarcity minded women. The they use it as like a carrot. Yep. Carrot and sticking the woman because he knows she doesn't really like him. He says, but you know what? Ah, I get a beautiful woman. You know, I get sexual activity with her and it costs me a couple pennies. It's, it's no problem. But for the woman, we're speaking to the women who are serious. For the women who are serious, the quality women of substance who are serious about cultivating a healthy relationship with a man and serious about learning how to attract their ideal mate, you want to put these practices to play. You want to set up the buffer date. You want to make sure that there is genuine and sincere uh attraction before even giving a guy your phone number. Okay, so let me ask you a question. What about the girls that are serious and the boys are not, the men are not, they're playing around, that they really are sincere, they are career women, they've got their own thing going, they've got their own finances. What are the pitfalls to look for when the guy is not serious? A, and then what about women that are dating online and a con. And is there a difference with women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 20s? Well, if you are a woman, you never depreciate. You always have value. <laughs> 20, 30, 40, 50. I don't know how old you are, but if you were I'm a single 53. woman, I'm sure. And you look great. I'm sure <laughs> if you <laughs> Young guys will be all up on you. And they wouldn't be concerned about your age. You yeah. are a woman. This is yeah. what women need to understand. You are a woman. 
The moment you start thinking, oh, I'm older now, that's where the problem is. Us men are not saying it, but you still have value, extreme value. You're still feminine. You're still nurturing. You're still loving. You're yeah. still warm and compassionate. That's what women, that's what men are attracted to. They're mm-hmm. not attracted to ages. If you're an adult woman, you're in. You're a shoe in. Okay. But if you are, now, this is how women can, uh, who, women who are, serious women who are genuinely interested in being in a healthy long lasting relationship the first thing you have to do is you have to create i always this is what i tell my clients in my mentorship program the first thing we do is we create your ideal mate yes we create it you have to know exactly what it is that you want Mm. and be unwavering Mm. be unwavering in what you want yeah if you want a man for example Let's let's break this down. If you want a man who makes you laugh, put that on your list. Mm-hmm. You want a man who's fit, put that on your list. Okay. You want a man who loves God, put that on your yes. list. You want a man who doesn't drink, put that on your list. Your list. You want yes. a man who doesn't have any kids, put that on your, list. your list. You want a man who is uh, above six feet, put that on your, your list. list. Whatever it is that you like, you need What's to put on that your on your list. list. And here's why. When you go out... You're going to start seeing your ideal mate because you created him in your mind. So now it's top of mind. And now you're looking for him. You're like, you're being proactive, which is what I highly recommend. A lot of women, they're sitting around waiting for Mm -hmm. their Boaz. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for their Boaz. Mm -hmm. And they're realizing Boaz is never coming. Mm -hmm. Boaz Mm -hmm. doesn't have to search for women. Mm. Boaz, everywhere Boaz shows up, and for those of you who don't know who Boaz is, Boaz is a is someone is a biblical name. He's in the Bible, and he's a wealthy. He's the he's the type of man that women dream of. He's fit, he's good looking, he's educated, and he's wealthy. These type of men don't search for women. They don't create online. Pro- they're not doing all of this stuff because they don't have to. And that's not to say that you won't find this type of man on an online dating app or out somewhere it's just there's so few of them it's not enough for everyone to get lucky with this type of guy so what i recommend is being proactive create the type of man that you want once you create the type of man that you want you already know where to find them here's how i know once you say oh i want a man who owns a home i want a man who is above the six-figure mark these Mm -hmm. type of men they go to very, very similar places, fundraisers, ah. um, you know, uh, galas, yes. charity events, yes. things like yes. that. The philanthropy. Go. Right. But you wouldn't know that if you never made the decision that this is the type of man that I want. I live for it. Because how would you know where to go if you haven't created him first? Yeah. And then when you create him, you know who the guy is and you know who the guy isn't. Oh, about these are earlier. nuggets. Yes. You have to yes. know who he is, who he isn't, where he is, where he isn't. So now you'll stop wasting your time. You go to the bar and you look around. You're like, oh, man, the men didn't approach me. Or the men who did approach me, they weren't my type. Well, yeah. think about this. Go back to your list of your ideal mate. Would your ideal mate be at a bar? No. Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. It depends on who you are. It yeah. depends on who you are and what your values are. But I I highly recommend taking a look at your values and yes. basing your values on who you are. Yes. For example, um, you know, I like children. Yes. So I don't have a preference of whether a woman has children or not. Yeah. I just care if that woman loves her children, yes. loves me, loves yes. herself. Yes. It's all good. Yes. In my opinion, yeah, 100%. but you have to understand that about yourself. There's a lot of men who don't like children on the level that I like children. That is true too. So that they might not true. be, they might not be as attractive. So it's different. It'll be different for you, different for your sister, different yeah. for your aunt, different yeah. for your friends. Yes. Forget about what they're saying. This is where a lot of women get in trouble. They start listening to other people about what they want. No, you have to create what you want for your life. That's going to be based on who you are. You can't get help with this. You have to look yourself in the mirror and make a decision. Yes. So another thing, the other thing about the online dating, you said that a lot of women are getting uh, bamboo. 
yeah. I, listen, I just saw something online where a woman, she was on Dr. Phil. I'm going to send you that clip. She was on Dr. Mm -hmm. Phil and she thought she was engaged to the, the singer Omarion. <laughs> Delusion, denial, not being honest with herself. That's what it Do is. Do you think also it's a matter of low self-esteem? Absolutely. Absolutely. All of this has to do with the energy that you're putting out. Yeah. Once you take the time to focus on yourself and build yourself up, this is some deep in, internal spiritual work that you have to do on yourself. It's going to require you to get off the dating scene for a while so that you can so that you can work through some of the the trauma and the pain and heal from it. Once you're honest with yourself, you're going to see that there's a lot of things that have been holding you back, but it's things that you simply have to let go of to propel so you if forward. You're, absolutely. <laughs> if you're telling yourself a man will never like me. A man will never choose me. A man will never take me seriously. All of that's negative thought. Yeah. And this is why coaching is so yeah. important so that we can start telling you the truth. Yes. And so that you can start believing the tru truth in yourself. Yes. I don't have new information. As a coach, I don't have new information. All I'm doing is taking a mirror and showing it to you. Yeah. I'm going to show you yeah. who you are right now. You might be at your lowest point. Yeah. But I'm going to show you. I want you to be. You're at your lowest point. But when you here's the good thing. Here's the good thing about being at your lowest point. There are higher levels that you can get to. Mm. There are higher levels that you can get to. But you need the right people around you. You need positive people. You need people who are uplifting. People who are going to empower you. People who are going to educate you. People who are going to help you get to the next level. Mm. If you're hanging out with friends who are on the same low level as you and they have no idea how to elevate, mm. you're never going to grow. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. you're never gonna go and you have to see yourself so back to your question about the online dating that's why i wrote this book dating manual for single women so many women skip the qualifying step because the guy looks good if a guy like me was single and i went online i would know everything to say to get a woman's attention in fact i know the right pictures to post too Yes. So if I'm putting the right, yeah. I'm putting professional it's pictures fine. of myself. And no. this is the uh, this is what women need to understand about certain types of men. And you get to decide what type of man you're looking for. Maybe you want a man who isn't able to just go out and meet. Maybe he doesn't have the big personality. Maybe he isn't wildly charismatic. Maybe he isn't fit. Maybe he isn't as tall as everybody else. Maybe that's what you want he's more likely to be willing to go on online dating because maybe he's an introvert. Mm -hmm. It depends on, it depends on what you like and what you want. If introverted is your type, he's more likely to, to engage where he doesn't have to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and online dating allows him to do that. So there's nothing wrong with online dating. Yes. It's all about who you are and what it is that you want. But if you're making your list, you're creating out your list of your ideal mate, and you start putting down things like, oh, I want him to be fit. I want him to be athletic. I want him to be, tall, I want him to be charismatic. I want him to have a big personality. I want him to be the type of man that every woman desires. Think about it. Why would this type of man be on the whole time? You're so right. If you're being honest with yourself, why would this guy be on an online dating app? except to run through the women because he knows there's women on there in abundance, good looking women of all shapes and sizes, all colors. He can have a different woman every night of the week yeah. using online dating. Yeah. Okay. He's there to play. He's there to fish. He's there for sport. Yeah. These are just questions that they have asked me. And I said, I'm going to ask you to wrap it up. I need for you to promise that you will come back to the show. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll yes. The, the ladies need this information. I promise to come back. Information. The book is a must. Even I want to read it because the, the affirmations, affirmations, affirmations that he's speaking are so very true. What I want the ladies to do is I want you to get serious okay. about, I'm, I'm going to give you a little rundown. Get serious about what it is that you truly want. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to create your ideal mate. 
pen and paper, write down all of his characteristics on the inside and out. Then I want you to figure out where he's going to be and go there. When you get there, when you see him, when you're face to face with your ideal mate, do these three things. Look him in his eyes, smile at him and say hello. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Henye. Thank you so much. I am so happy for you. You seem to be on the up and up. Congratulations on your book. Congratulations on your upcoming wedding. We send Fumi Nation a big hug to your son. We love your book already. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Thank you for taking your time with us and hopefully we'll see you sooner than later. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Tenye. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending time with us.